Hey guys, here we go into a film study on uh, Sullivan Barrera versus Dimitri Bivol. And I think that I got a lot of views on my film study of them fighting um, other people for the preview to this fight. Um, and I got a lot of dislikes because I think people thought it was going to be this fight that I was breaking down. So a lot of people were disappointed. But I am going to be breaking this fight down now. Uh, I'll be doing uh, the first two rounds at least. And I'm going to be talking about a lot of the things that went on in the... Um, in the film studies and kind of trying to relate them and and show how the effective they were against these uh, said fighters um, and kind of reiterate the ideas that I was talking about um, uh, before the fight and kind of talk about how they affect the fight now and just so you guys can see if you watched them like I know a lot of people watched them um, just so you can kind of see how the ideas play out and how this whole idea of like this boxing theory works um, and the way that you know your mind works like in a, in a combat situation um, also uh, I actually haven't seen this whole fight. Saturday I was really busy. I was actually making my own boxing videos, training videos on how to throw power punches, um, misnomers about uh, sitting down on your punches, about how, what turning your punch over means, um, and what your landing knuckles are. You know, there are a lot of misinformation out there and how you want to get power in your shots and whatever, and how people think you have to be strong or punchers are born or whatever. But anyway, check those videos out. There's some interesting stuff. Um, the idea there is that I'm breaking the chains of kinetic energy down so that they're easier to drill and work on independently so you can put it all together later. Um, don't just start sm spamming the dislike button because you don't understand. You know, get in the gym, go throw some punches, go figure it out, you know, and you'll see that this is going to help you a lot. But anyway, um, let's go ahead and get into the fight. Turn off that sound. <laughs> um, and I'm going to put it in slow-mo because I don't want to get picked up by copyright bullshit, you know. Um, but also it's just easier to watch and it's easier to study the film. And this is the part that a lot of people don't like. They just want the highlights or they want you to break down one punch and be like, damn, that fool, he rocked him. Oh, that was crazy. You know, this is not like, this is not that channel, you guys. I'll tell you right now, you guys can just dip. Uh, we talk about real boxing here. Um, anyway, coming in immediately. Now, this is something that's really interesting. Um, Bibble comes out immediately. He's got his high, his high guard up, right? He's got his active guard. He's fainting forward, right? And look at how he sees uh, Barrera move off the line. And he attacks him as soon as he moves off the line. <clears throat> the reason for this is because um, Barrera, like, and this is like a common theme. And I think it's something that he probably picked up on uh, doing film study on Barrera and watching him uh, and understanding that he doesn't punch well when he's he's moving laterally. Because the way that he moves and he just attacks him right away seemed very out of out of um, character for me for Bivol. And I was like, oh, whoa, he didn't even set that shot up. Like he didn't do nothing. But he throws a lot of shots like that while Barrera is moving off the line. And I wonder if that's something that he picked up maybe watching the Andre Ward fight. Andre Ward likes to fight on timings. Um, uh, maybe a another fight, even fights that he's had success in, you know, Barrera's still struggled, you know, because he there are a lot of like fundamentals that he, he doesn't have, even though he's a very sound fighter. Uh, but anyway, um, right away that you notice the way that um, Barrera is attacking, he's not setting up his shot, right? He doesn't have an active guard. He's got his high guard up, right? And he feints up. And he goes in for the the jab, right, at the high guard, right? Kind of maybe land, right? And then go for a jab to the body. And then look at how off balance he is after he throws that shot. Excuse me, I'm playing with my nose and shit. But look at how off balance he is after he throws that shot, right? Part of the reason, it looks like he's he has his weight on his toes, on his front foot, right? And he kind of leans into the shot. Um, but he also doesn't, he doesn't control his opponent after. He doesn't use his forearms or his hands. You know, he doesn't uh, throw that shot and then transition his weight and control him with the right hand. Um, he doesn't pivot or move off the line after he's transferred his weight. And you can see him kind of lunge forward a little bit. Um, and we'll see that Dimitri Bivol really looks to take uh, control of that. Now right here, you know, maybe Bivol thinking, or Barrera thinking that he's um, controlled um, Bivol into maybe going into this high guard, right? And like getting caught by that left hook. But uh, Barrera not really setting it up. And again, really interesting, right? Uh, when he throws it, look at how off balance he winds up looking. You know, and he kind of gets stuck there. I think that, again, that's because all his weight winds up in his toes. Pushing forward. Now, I like this from Barrera, right? Um, again, not really great at setting his shots up, right? But he kind of feints forward, right? Bivol's watching him. He gets into his high guard, takes a step back, and says, hey, he's setting something up. I got to move back, right? And he's got his eyes on him, and he just moves back, you know, and then notices that 
Uh, the last time that he threw like a two punch combination, he just started stepping back, right? Uh, he didn't throw any punches, right? And Barrera does the same thing. He starts moving back and eats a jab on the way out. Um, jab to the body, you know, not super easy to block. You know, it's not super easy to tell if it's coming, especially when um, you're changing levels. It makes it harder to throw punches at your opponent. You know, so Bivo kind of gets away with that one. Um, but I also wonder if it's while um, it's because Barrera is starting to move laterally, right? He lifts up his foot and Bivo starts attacking him. But anyway, moving on. Throws a 1-2 right there. And we are going to watch it again. I'll try not to rewind these so much, but um, <clears throat> moving forward, I won't as much. But So pay attention. I guess you guys can just fucking rewind it yourselves. I don't even think about that, to be honest. Um, but he throws a 1-2, right? But it's not a real 1-2. It's a flashing the lead hand and then throwing a second shot, um, hoping that that Bivol is going to stay there, right? But the idea there is that um, Bivol is constantly watching his opponent, right? And whenever his opponent starts setting something up, he just takes a step back, right? He does kind of move back in a straight line, but he's also very good at breaking these patterns, right? But it's interesting that Barrera thought for some reason that that was going to land when Bivol has only ever shown that when he tries to set something up that he takes a step back. So there was absolutely no chance that shot was going to land. Uh, we're not going to talk about that jab because I missed it, but we'll just keep moving on. Because there are other things that are really interesting, uh, like trap setting, and the breaking, excuse me, the breaking of patterns. Um, again, right, uh, as soon as Barrera starts setting up his shots, and again, he doesn't set them up very intelligently, right? He looks for a time to, you know, where he wants to engage, he plants himself, right? Now he's planted, he's not moving laterally at all, and now he starts shooting a jab, coming forward, shooting a jab, um, and he moves off the line right there. He doesn't like fall in or do nothing, you know, dangerous, right? But what is he trying to set up, right? What kind of information is he getting from Bivol, right? Um, by throwing those jabs, right? That Bivol is moving back, right? And that he's got his high guard. But he already knew that, right? He's already thrown three or four combinations. You know, now he wants to, he wants to be looking for ways to take advantage of that. Again, um, Bivol taking advantage of Barrera moving laterally, shooting jabs at him. You know, and it doesn't look that like Barrera knows how to move in the ring very well, right? And I can talk a little bit about that too. Um, I was discussing this with my with my friend that I made the videos with, um, Becca, and the idea here is that he see how he steps first and then his back foot follows, right? Um, that what you're doing is you're you're spreading your weight and you're not really able to. Um, you're not really able to transition your weight from this spot, from. Like right there is a little different because he's punching at the same time and he's shooting his feet. He's like, ha, you know, stepping, right? But now he's just walking, right? And now he's not in position really to punch because he's, his weight is so much more spread out, right? And he's, it's, he's able to catch him in between, uh, in between those steps uh, because he's, he's stepping and he's not pivoting and moving and slipping. Now, a lot of fighters do this. If you watch like... Um, uh, Canelo, right? And watch the first few rounds. I, and if you can watch them on my channel, right? I do a breakdown of the first few rounds of the Golovkin fight, uh, Golovkin Canelo. Um, Canelo has a very similar style the way he walks and he walks forward with his left leg and then his right leg follows and he kind of pivots a little bit, but you're supposed to do it in the opposite order. You're supposed to pivot first and then move your back foot um, uh, to follow so that you can always stay in punching position uh, and keep the, mov keep the movement sharp. But um, a lot of fighters who do have that kind of flaw where they let their legs get out from underneath them and then step in, um, they'll punch off of that movement. So they'll lean forward, step, and they'll throw a punch off of it, bah, you know? And uh, if you watch the Golovkin-Lemieux Golovkin fight, Lemieux tried to do that a lot, and Golovkin was able to completely dominate him off that timing. Um, but the first few rounds of the Golovkin-Canelo fight were fought off that same axis. Um, Golovkin trying to take advantage of that, like a um, uh, very popular, um, you know, I don't want to say it's like poor footwork, but it's not, it's not what you're supposed to be doing. When you're really relaxed, you know, and you're fighting some guy, you're, you're just going to school, right? Yeah, you do whatever you want, right? Um, but you can't do that against Golovkin, um, even though um, Canelo, he did, you know. Um, but, um, but anyway, there's, there's like a whole ebb and flow in that fight about it, um, about how um, Golovkin starts trying to take advantage and shoot jabs on him on that timing when he steps and then he's going to shoot a jab off that foot because that's his rhythm, right? And then uh, Canelo realizing that that's a trap that Golovkin is setting for him and he's waiting for that timing. 
and then he starts setting traps for that timing, and then Golovkin setting traps for the traps that Canelo's setting for him. It's like so convoluted and crazy. It's just like, it was just amazing boxing, to be honest. I was really, really, really impressed with Canelo um, in that fight and his, his ring intelligence. Uh, but anyway, getting back to this fight, um, that's the reason why Barrera, it looks like right here, why he's getting caught with that is because he has that flawed kind of footwork where you're walking um, instead of pivoting and, and using sharp movements, and it's kind of easy to catch him out of position. Um, again, right there. And that's what I like about this format is that I can ramble and talk about other stuff in boxing and, you know, kind of like sh you guys can start seeing it too. You know, I don't know if you guys pay attention to it when you're watching other fights. Um, but, um, uh, and then kind of use that information to be like, oh, it's because of this little flaw. And, you know, you could put it together yourself. But anyway, um, again, Barrera doesn't know how to set up his punches very well. He's only got a very, very basic feints, right? Like in most fights, like against most average fighters, Barrera's going to, he's going to smash them. You know, he's going to smash them. But at this high level, you got to know how to get your opponent out of position without committing to something yourself. And here he comes forward. Uh, stepping forward, it's kind of, I don't, it's not a probing jab, he's not putting himself out of position, right, but he has to commit to the motion and moving forward, but he doesn't know how to do it in a way that's going to keep Bivol interested in engaging with him, right, Bivol just instantly says, oh, I don't want to commit, I don't want to have any kind of engagement with him where he's setting up his shots, right, and it's interesting too because Bivol is usually so good, like in his previous fighter, the fight against Cedric Avenue, uh, controlling the space between the two fighters. But in this fight, he's not really doing that. You know, it's only 40 seconds in, right? But he's not using his probing lead hand, right? He's not fainting. He's not slipping on the inside. He's not, you know, doing a lot of the stuff that he was doing before. But that's also because uh, Barrera is so, so keen to put himself out of position that by not controlling the space between them it's allowing Barrera to throw his punches and because Barrera doesn't know how to set his punches up properly all him throwing his own punches is going to do is put him in danger and we'll talk we'll see more of that later um, good jab to the body right there <clears throat> and I wonder if that was a timing thing right where Barrera's oh no he wasn't moving laterally he starts moving laterally after but that's interesting too right uh he moves back he takes those two steps and he's like, oh he's coming forward right just as Bivol starts to try to control the space with his lead hand right and then before moving laterally he shoots that body shot right i wonder if that's something he'll keep up you know um attacking his opponent before he starts moving laterally because he understands that Bivol is trying to um um time him on that lateral movement shoots the two jabs right nothing comes back and then Bivol shoots a jab, right? And Bivol figuring out a timing where he might be safe to throw punches now, right? So he's he's noticed that Barrera will throw two punches or a one-two or whatever. I don't know if he's thrown any one-twos yet, but he will, you'll see. Um, and then uh, he finds a timing to start throwing punches. Um, there was another film study I did. Um, well, I'm not, I don't wanna bring it up. I don't wanna get too, too deep into it and you know convoluted or whatever, but he shoots the one-two. Now Bivol knows that nothing's coming back, right? So he's looking for a timing to set up a shot. And he probes with a jab, and then a jab comes back. So Biv, uh, Barrera is showing that he's trying to counter Bivol's jab, right? And we'll see what Bivol does with that, right? So what, right away, what does he do? He fires his own hard jab, right? Boom. And then pulls back, expecting possibly a counter himself, right? And we'll see what he goes with that too, because it's, it's brilliant. Um, the traps that he sets up in this fight are just amazing. Um, again, right? Barrera comes forward with the double jab, one, two, and immediately, right, Bivol now countering with his own jab, and it looks like Barrera slips this one, but he doesn't, it catches him, um, and it pushes his head down, um, but Bivol picking up on these patterns, right, because of the fact that Barrera doesn't know how to set his punches up properly, he's got very basic feints that are easy to read and very, very basic patterns, right, and ends up getting caught with the shot. Um, it's a grazing shot, um, but it catches him nonetheless, and Bivol is showing that he's thinking in there one minute into the fight, and he's finding ways that he's going to be able to limit Barrera's offense further. Because if this is how Barrera knows how to set his punches up, and Bivol is able to make him pay every time he sets those shots up, he's going to stop setting those shots up like that. And that's going to mean that his offense becomes even more compact and more limited than it is already. And that's when you wind up getting knockouts, right? When your opponent doesn't have any other options um, and you take away all their, their, not only their offense, but their defense because you start the probing and the controlling. Um, and then they just start getting hit with too many clean shots. But anyway, moving on, we're just too far into this. We're not far enough into the round for 
being 15 minutes into the film study. Good feint from Barrera right there. And now Bibble, feeling comfortable coming forward, right? And he starts probing, right? You can see his little glove right there. He's not committing to that jab, right? He's just kind of probing, sticking it out there. Hey, hey, what do you want? What do you want to do, boy? What's up? Boom. And beautiful right there from Bivol, right? Again, Barrera doesn't set his shot up, right? And he steps in, goes to the body, and Bivol is able to counter it, right? Um, I think there was another instance where Barrera has shot a body shot, right? And there were no follow-ups to the body shot. So Bivol now seeing, picking up on that pattern too, when the body shot comes, nothing comes out after it, uh, and he's able to counter him right there. Beautiful work from Bivol. Shooting the jab, boom. And shooting the jab and then going to the body, right? So he shoots the jab here, right? And then stays on defense, waiting to see if the counter is coming or if it's in Barrera's mind, right? And then he shoots the jab and he slips and he goes down to the body with the right hand, uh, making sure that he would get away from the counter if it was coming, but also noticing that um, when he throws the one, that the body shot winds up being open, you know? And that's like a basic, a very basic style of setting up your offense. And I think that the idea there is that uh, Bivol, ooh, wants to be setting something else up. But um, Brera comes in with that fainting like left hook. And instead of taking a, a step back this time, Bivol decides to create a trap, expecting it to be um, maybe a double jab or the, you know, the flash and then the right hand. And he predicts it very beautifully and comes up with an uppercut. It doesn't land, right? But that's not the point. It's the fact that Bivol, instead of taking those steps back, looks to slip on the inside now and catch him with the shot while he's open. Um, and that's also because of the fact that um, Barrera kind of gets wide with his shots a little bit. Um, it doesn't land, right? But that's not the point. It's the fact that he's working and he's thinking in there, right? And he's setting his shots up. Not bad right there. You know, not a real shot, right? But making Barrera think, catching the jab and then going around with the hook. You know, not a real punch, right? but wanted to keep him mindful of that, that it might be coming, right? And that actually, you know, it might not even be that he wants to set the left hook up, but that he wants to keep Bivol in the high, or he wants to keep Barrera in the high guard, right? He doesn't want him kind of catching the shots um, and then being able to transfer his weight and move and roll. He wants to keep him in this uh, limited posture. Catching the one, two. Right, and again, you know, Barrera very limited, right? Look at how he sets up his punches, right? Like that one kind of lands on the hip after grazing the elbow, but there's no variation in it, right? All the ways that he's thrown his punches have been the same exact way, and that's gonna get him in a lot of trouble soon. Um, and I assume everybody actually has watched the fight already, so you, you fucking know, you know. I don't know, because I actually haven't seen the whole fight. I know he gets KO'd in like round 10 or something, but. Again, Barrera not setting his shot up really well. He comes with the feint, right? And he doesn't understand that he needs to be um, working off of what Barrera gives him, right? Barrera, or uh, Bivol gives him. Bivol goes into this posture. So what are the open shots for that, right? Uh, and he's trying the hook now, right? Maybe he thought that the counter right hand was coming and he could go around it. <clears throat> Moving back again. And this one's interesting too, right? So he shoots that jab, right? And then Barrera shoots that jab and Bivol takes a full like leaping step back right there, right? Which is so much different than just moving back, right? And we'll see where that goes too. Very interesting stuff. Sorry, this might be a little slow pace. I'm sorry, guys. Pressing forward and now he starts controlling Barrera, fainting, probing. He gives him a probe and then hits him with a jab right there. Catches him with a one-two while, um, while he's moving laterally. Again, he doesn't have the greatest lateral movement. He finds himself out of position. As you can see right here, he just actually hops straight up in the air, right? He moves here, steps to the left, and then he, to get his feet back together, he hops in the air and winds up completely out of position and gets caught with a shot. That's definitely something that Bivol noticed in watching film of Barrera, in watching the way that he moves around the ring, looking for those kind of timings. Boom, oh, and Bivol starts setting, he starts firing off on his traps now. Now, again, remember when we've seen uh, Barrera throw his one twos, right? He throws one two, Bivol just takes a step back. Throws a one two, Bivol just takes a step back. And what does Barrera do when he does that? 
Does he control him after? Does he put his hands on him? Does he uh, push Bivol around? Does he stop Bivol from trying to um, transfer his weight? Does he throw that one two boom and then move off the line? Does he slip? Does he you know immediately shoot back? He doesn't do anything, right? He just stays there, right? Because he doesn't expect anything coming back from Bivol because Bivol hasn't shown him anything, um, and this is this is where it starts to bite. Um, Barrera in the in the butt, you know his limited defense, right? People think defense is just when you throw a punch at me, right? If you throw a jab at me, boom, I caught it. Oh, you throw a right hand, boom, I catch it. Or you throw a right hand, I slip it, right? Or you throw a jab, I slip, slip, right? Or I roll that shot, and that's defense, right? Um, being defensively sound is how you you defend yourself, even when punches aren't coming, right? Having a good active guard, right? As we found out with Luis Ortiz, right? Um, exactly what I, I thought had a very good chance of happening. Um, Deontay Wilder turns it up late in the fight and because of the fact that Ortiz doesn't have any goddamn head movement, right? He's not constantly moving his head. Uh, he gets caught with a one-two because he gets complacent. He just He's like, oh, I'm just predicting a one. He's not going to throw a two. He's too tired or he was hurt a couple rounds ago. He was this, he was that. And he just gets caught with a, a straight right hand and, you know, boom, that's the end of the fight. Um, um, but having defense, just inherently always understanding that your opponent is dangerous, right? And Barrera breaks that rule, throws that one, two, and stays on the line, right? And notice he can't get back, he can't get his gloves back fast enough, then Bivol can get his gloves into his face, right? Boom, and then that jab comes, and you see it on his head right there, then the two comes, whoops, and then that kind of uppercut thing. Pay no attention to that framing thing, that's just because my uh, VLC is kind of freaking out because I'm doing the slow-mo and the frame by frame, but um, Boom and again Barrera showing that he's throwing his combinations or he's throwing his punches in You know sets of two right either jab jab or jab right hand Boom and Bivol is easily able to pick him off because he has a very limited offense, right? And eventually um, I haven't seen the fight, but I would imagine he's able to take this offense away from Barrera and make Barrera fight him with a very athletic style, um, but not really land any clean punches very, very oftenly, very often. Um, fainting right there, getting him to the high guard, right? And then fainting and then trying to get him in with the body shot right there um, and completely out of position, right? He's leaning forward on his front foot and Bibble misses the counter, but does a great job of controlling him. Look how he sweeps that hand around his head, right? And this is defensive responsibility, right? The jab comes, boom, and he sweeps it around his head and then controls him, right? So now if Barrera wanted to come back with another right hand because he missed that shot, he might wind up just completely with Bivol's head, hand pushing on his face. So when he throws that right hand, he's not able to get any weight into it. You see what I'm saying? Boom, right? And he can't turn his weight into it because Bivol is controlling his head. And then what does Bivol do after he missed that shot? He gets off the line, right? Defense, defensive responsibility. Right, showing that he's he's a professional fighter, he and he's taking Barrera seriously. Even though Barrera is not doing shit in this fight, right? He understands that Barrera is a dangerous fighter. Countering him again, um, anticipating that the the one 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 or the one two might come and trying to counter him. Mm -mm -mm. Ooh, what was that? <laughs> So the jab comes, and then boom, he times him again, right, uh, in between punches because he knows that he's going to be throwing either a one or a one-two right there. He's able to get away from it, create just enough space. A little dangerous, right? But the fact that he knows that it's always going to be a one-one or a one-two allows him to predict where he needs to be, how far he needs to move back, you know. And he's just right now, he's just taking Barrera to school. He's just picking Barrera completely off, and it's it's interesting because. He's not even having to use his very high level techniques, you know, of controlling the space because Barrera is so predictable. Excuse me. Um, Barrera is just making it so easy for him. He's putting himself out of position for him, right? And out of position, what I mean is, boom, he steps forward and he commits to that jab. It's not a really a fainting jab so that he can try to land this right hand and winds up getting caught with some shots in between. Ooh, interesting right here, right? So now when Bivol looks to set up his own shot, right? He shoots that jab and he sees that that counter is coming. And I think I remember that counter coming before, right? Um, and he's able to slip it and then come in with the left hook to the body. He winds up landing in the chest, but Bivol knows that it's coming, right? Boom. And he's able to slip on the inside after. He even has his guard up right there, in there, and then comes in with the left hook, 
you know. It might have been going to the head, to be honest. Maybe he thought Barrera was going to kind of duck down and get into his shell a little bit. But Bivol just um, doing a masterful job so far. And I'm going to kind of stop trying to go so slow with the film study. I'll try to keep it up. My bad. Shooting that jab. And it really looks like he's waiting for that counter jab too, taking a step back. And again, he has that step where he just moves completely all the way back and repositions himself. It looks like, I'm gonna, ah, oh, damn it. So if you watch, I'm sorry guys. So he shoots that jab and it looks like he takes a second step back to plant himself for a counter, expecting Barrera to chase him. And I think that's something that might happen later on in the fight. I don't know, because I haven't seen it. Uh, catching both jabs again, because Barrera is very predictable, right? Catching the jab and then going back. You know, that right hand not really landing. And Burville, even though he knows these combinations are coming, he also has to think in his mind, okay, this guy's a world championship level fighter. What is he doing? You know, is he going to break rhythm on me? Is he going to break pattern and set something else new up? So he's got to test them. You know, oh, I'll just take a step back this time. You can't counter every time because then your opponent knows the counter is coming every time. Countering the jab right there. Not countering at that time because maybe Barrera is looking to set up a, two, a right hand off of that counter counter. Some good fainting right there from Barrera. Why doesn't he do that earlier? I don't know what happened. Who threw first? Who threw first? So Barrera trying to counter Bivol's jab, but Bivol moving off the line, not, only, not allowing him to. Oh man, and Barrera does it again. He doesn't set up his punch. He just comes straight in. And this is the problem, right? Like, Barrera's a very athletic guy, right? Against a, against a fighter who doesn't know what they're doing or doesn't know that they can counter or doesn't know how to counter punch. And counter punching, people think it's so fucking hard, you guys. It's so easy. It's really easy. And uh, I'll be doing some videos on counter punching and showing you how to counter punch and teaching, uh, teaching my friend Becca how to punch uh, and counter punch. Um, and you'll see that it's really simple. You know, you're just waiting for a timing. But um, he flashes the lead hand. Um, Bivol knows that the two or the one is coming, so he just gets his high guard up, takes his step back, right? Boom. Oh, look, he does take that step back. And when he does take that step back, that's when he's looking to counter, right? Boom. He's able to plant himself and land some counters. Um, because of the fact that Pereira is very predictable. He doesn't know how to set his punches up. He doesn't understand the theory of setting your punches up, of getting your opponent out of position first, right? Again, he does the same thing, right? I think he might add an extra feint in here, right? Feint, feint, and then throws the two. But he doesn't know how to get Bivol out of position. And Bivol, what has Bivol even shown? That's it, right? Boom, bap, bap, you know? But he hasn't shown that um, that he's he's being diverse either. He hasn't had to switch it up on, on um, Barrera either. Boom. Countering the jab, beautiful shot from him. Get out of the way, ref. Get out of the way. Throwing a one-two and just taking the open shot, right? Barrera saying, man, I could do that too, but obviously he can't. I think there's like a pretty neat combination here. Fainting him, fainting. And uh, Bivol waiting to counter because again, like I said, Barrera doesn't know how to set his punches up. He's very, he's very honest in this regard, right? So he faints. He's coming in with that right hand, right? And Bivol looks to counter, and it looks like his his uh, arm gets caught on Barrera's arm, so he doesn't land that left hook counter. Like maybe he was just a little bit slow, but Barrera is just way too slow, um, and he doesn't land that shot. Um, and I'm not exactly sure what Barrera hits, but again, after he throws that right hand, what does he do? He stays on the line, right? And he doesn't rotate. He doesn't pivot out to his left. He doesn't move anywhere. Boom, and he gets caught kind of with the left hook on the top of the head, but a beautiful right hand after uh, because he doesn't know how to move off the line. He has no real defense. He doesn't know how to set his punches up. So if any, so the, the combination of him not knowing how to set his punches up, right, not knowing how to get Bivol out of position, not knowing how to probe and make Bivol, um, not get, get Bivol out of position, um, and then the fact that he doesn't know how to get off the line after he punches or control his opponent after he punches makes Barrera insanely easy to counterpunch. Um, and I talked a lot about that in the, in the pre-fight build-up to this fight. Um, 
and how easy it was going to be for Bibble. And I, I predicted that he was going to smash Barrera, uh, even though I thought Barrera had like that athletic guy's chance. Um, again, now they're going to start counter battling over the war. Barrera's not, he's not, a, he's not dumb. He's got experience, right? So he shoots that jab and then understands that um, not like uh, Bibble is not throwing one twos off those counters. So he's able to set up a shot. Like he kind of trades shots with Bivol, right? So Bivol shoots the, or he shoots the jab, Bivol's countering the jab, right? And then he shoots his own jab and Bivol moves back. But Bivol does a good job of uh, controlling him with the lead hand while he does. You can rewind it yourself if you want to see it. But now Bivol coming forward, fainting, fainting, changing levels. Fainting, shooting the jab and taking a step back and seeing again that, um, that uh, Barrera wants to counter the jab, and we're gonna see where that goes too. Um, I haven't seen very much into this round, so a lot of it's gonna be new. Um, so I hope I don't geek out too much on you guys and make it unbearable to watch, but um, but yeah, I'm really excited to watch the rest of this fight after the film study. Countering the jab, jab to the body, and then, you know, look at, even Bivol winds up a little bit out of position. He shoots the jab, moves off the line, right? And um, Barrera almost beats him to the line, right? And starts coming in for a counter. And Bivol just shoots another jab at him to control him, to keep him at bay, right? How simple is that, right? Um, not only does he move off the line when he shoots the initial jab, oh, beautiful, but he, can, he controls him after. He does both of those things that I was telling you that Barrera doesn't know how to do, and that's why he's getting countered. Um, and that's why... That's why Barrera, who's probably really good at waiting for his opponent to get out of position um, to throw punches at him, I think he actually is pretty good at it. That's why he's having so much trouble because Bivol is setting up his punches. He's fainting a lot more. Um, he's changing levels on him. Um, and, and he controls his opponent on the way out, you know, and moves off the line. But here, this is beautiful right here. He sees that it's gonna be that same flashing of the lead hand and then gonna be a right hand after, right? So immediately, instead of taking a step back, he changes the pattern up on him and Barrera thinks it's going to, he's gonna take a step back and, and he might be able to land a shot, but he Bivol slips the right hand and lands his own right hand right on Barrera's chin. Just beautiful boxing, um, beautiful fight IQ from Bivol, understanding these patterns and these, um, the, how to set traps, you know, and or how to walk Barrera into his own punches, you know, and Bivol doesn't even have to do anything, right? Because Barrera is not setting his punches up. He doesn't have any variation. He doesn't know all the tricks that he needs to be he needs to be using, um, and he's just walking himself into punches, right? He put himself out of position here uh, and winds up eating a big right hand for no reason. Shooting a jab, Barrera not really comfortable countering for some reason, thinking the one two's coming, which is smart. You know, if you don't know your opponent's gonna throw one twos, right? And now it's interesting because Bivol has been throwing one twos, but they've been to the body instead. So, but anyway, Barrera moving uh, again with that very limited style, right? Where he's walking around the ring uh, and Bivol is able to see, or Barrera's moving off the line, right? But not using, um, correct like um, body mechanics, you know, kind of stepping when he should be kind of pivoting and moving. All right, now I haven't seen anything from here on. Oh man, Barrera. Again, Barrera has shown a propensity to want to be countering Bivol's jab, right? And I think that that's what that scene was. I didn't even talk about that. I just talked about something else, but um, but Bivol able to bait him with the jab, right? He knows that Barrera is looking to counter and he can see it right here, sorry. He can see it right here. I haven't seen any of this yet, so I might be a little slow and I have to rewind it a little more than I thought, but um, but he shoots that jab and he sees Barrera take a step on him, so he knows the counter is coming and he knows in his mind, he's like, oh, Barrera's trying to time me. He's trying to set something up, so now what does he do? Shoots that jab and immediately takes that half step back, right? Shoots that jab, boom, and then pulls and does his, has his own version of the pull counter and comes in with a combination. Um, especially easy for him to do because of the fact that whenever Barrera throws the right hand, he never comes back with the left hook, he never moves off the line, and he never controls his opponent, right? Bivol knows that there's no more punches coming. Um, once the right hand comes, that's it, right? And he's able to freely throw this combination at, at Barrera. Um, he does get out of there before the left hook comes, but... 
There you go. I think he gets a right hand in there. Shoots the jab. Nah, not really. It's not a hard punch either. It doesn't matter. Probing jab. Interesting. Fainting. Okay, so Barrera's trying to slip on the inside and probe him, right? And this is this is beautiful, you guys, right? Rather than Bivol shooting a hard jab at him, right, that might get him countered when Bivol slips to the inside, right? He shoots a little probing jab, right, to control him, and then Bivol tries, and then Barrera tries to counter that jab, and Bivol is able to easily get out of the way of it, just move his head a little bit and catch him with another jab. Um, and that's really interesting because it, it this that eventually is going to allow Bivol to take away Barrera's jab. Uh, completely because he's just countering and taking it away. Controlling him with the lead hand right there. Ooh, I wonder what happened to his head right there. He's, his head's bleeding all of a sudden. I missed it. I wonder what it was. They'll probably talk about it in between rounds, but I don't listen to the commentary most of the time. Do, do, do. Oh, and Bivol having a lot of success with that jab also because of the fact that Barrera doesn't have an active guard. He doesn't move his head at all. You know, it's always in the same spot. Boom, boom. I don't really know what's going on right here, to be honest. I haven't watched it, sorry. Flashing that jab. Uses head movement when he punches. He throws that right hand. I don't know if the right hand lands. That left hook kind of lands, like a little bit, like on the chin right here, you know, on the neck, kind of. Um, and then Barrera fighting pretty well on the inside, throwing a lot of punches. And that's why I expect him to have the most success throughout the entire fight. Um, not in any like real boxing range, but just when he's getting punched in the face, just being like, oh, who cares? Bah, 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 and just ripping punches off. Um, because in all of the other instances, he's just getting completely outboxed by Bivol. Ooh, does he land a shot right there? A good one? Probing. Oh, man. Let's see. No, it looks... I can't really tell if Barrera's lands. Um, but Bivol... Faints him, he gives him a probe, right? And Barrera bites on it like it's a real shot, and he pull counters with his own right hand. Um, and, you know, Bivol doesn't take into account the fact that Barrera has been um, putting his head all the way over his left leg when he throws his right hand in this particular instance and isn't able to, um, to predict that a counter is coming. But also, this winds up looking like a trap that Bivol was setting for Barrera, that Barrera like counter trapped him with, right? So Bivol thought that only the jab counter was coming like it had been before, right? And uh, Barrera turns it into a one-two. And I can't tell if if uh, Barrera's, Barrera's punch lands or not, right? But we can give him credit for that. It's not important that it, whether it lands or not, but it's the fact that he's setting up traps on his opponent's traps very high level stuff, and this is the first thing that's really impressive that Barrera's done in the fight so far. Um, but what is what is? Um, oh, this is beautiful too, right? This is absolutely beautiful. I like to talk about this real quick. Um, and after that engagement, right? Um, maybe Bivol gets hit right here, right? Now, what happens when you get hit right here, right? Maybe he cracks him, right? Barrera cracks him, and then he stays on the line. He covers up, right? And then he throws his own left hook, but he stays on the line with Barrera. And he just got hit with a big shot, maybe, right? We'll just assume he did. Now he's on the line. He might have been wobbled. He's on the line with Barrera. And Barrera's able to come up after that shot and bop, 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 you know, catch him with some shots. And that's how you get knocked out, by getting hit with um, consecutive hard blows, right? So a lot of these fighters like um, like Bivol, right? Uh, is Bivol the hardest one-hit puncher, like in the light heavyweight division? Even though he's got, like... Uh, knockout streak or like a uh, percentage of knockouts that's like in the 90%, right? Um, even though he's fighting killers, right? He's fighting good guys. Like these are not bums that he's fighting and he's got such a high level knockout. It's not because of the fact that he's like a, a crazy one hit wonder, you know, kind of puncher, right? Like uh, Sam Peter, right? Like that kind of puncher. Um, it's not that. It's that he's able to land successive blows, right? And fighters who who don't move off the line, they're the ones that are most prone to getting hit with successive punches, right? And that's the reason why they get knocked out, right? But um, a fighter like uh, like uh, Bivol right here, as you're gonna see, after he gets hit with that shot, does he stay on the line with Barrera, who's dangerous? He's very dangerous. No, he moves off the line instead of throwing, fuck, and I didn't fucking say it. Excuse my language. Oh, fuck, fuckity, fuck, fuck. 
instead of throwing a left hook right here, right, after getting caught with that shot, right, which he could he could land a massive left hook right here, right? But planning on staying on the line with your opponent is dangerous. So instantly in his mind, after he's throwing that right hand, he already knew he wanted to move off the line. So what does he do? Instead of throwing that left hook and transferring his weight to his right leg, he turns and pivots off instead and controls um, Barrera's head, right? And he moves off the line so that he's not in any more danger, right? Because to be honest, did he expect Barrera to throw a trap on his trap? Did he? No, he didn't, right? So if he hadn't had that instinct in his mind to automatically move off the line, he could have found himself in a lot of trouble right here. But because he's a smart and responsible fighter, he's able to move off the line and live to fight another day. And live to fight another day with the fighter that he's already outclassing. He doesn't need to take chances by staying on the line with a huge, a huge guy like that, right? Uh, an athletic, a fast, hard-hitting guy. I don't know how many... Uh, knockouts that Barrera has. He's probably got some knockouts. Um, the reason that he probably doesn't have as many is because he's not as good at setting his punches up, right? And again, that's why Bivol has so many knockouts is because he's good at setting his punches up. It's not because he's a one-hit wonder power puncher, right? Even though he is a good puncher. He is a good puncher. Don't get me wrong. But it's the fact that he can land so many clean blows because he's so much better at setting them up, right? So maybe that's where there's so much... Um, Discussion about how hard Golovkin hits, right? Is Golovkin the hardest puncher in all of boxing, pound for pound, right? If anybody, if you took any fighter in any division and put him in the, and put him in the same division as Golovkin, um, and you know made it so that they were an equally, like equally the same size, would he hit harder than anybody? Probably not. But the fact that he's so good at setting his punches up and landing clean punches means that he's going to be rocking you more often. Uh, because they're not like glancing blows, right? Especially um, if a fighter moves off the line a lot. Fuck, 40 minutes, god damn it. Anyway, you guys get what I'm saying. I don't gotta talk about it. Uh, and Bivol getting caught right here with this shot. I pause it right here because um, Barrera throws that right hand. And after the right hand, what does Barrera do every time? He usually leans down on his left leg to try to get away from counters, right? Like he got away from that counter, from the, the pull counter from Barrera where he baited him in, or from Bivol just a second ago in that last engagement. But this time he gives him that Kovalev and throws a left cross, right? And he lands it, right? And he lands it uh, because he's breaking the pattern on, on Bivol. And I haven't seen this yet, but what does Bivol do that's so smart? What does he do? He moves off the goddamn line so he doesn't take extra punches, right? Very smart fighter. Controlling him with the lead hand. Slipping, slipping on the inside. And as soon as he slips on the inside, right? So he goes, slips to the outside. Slips to the inside, and Barrera starts throwing shots at him. Um, throws that, goes back to that one-two. And I love that that uh, Bivol doesn't just shell up into his high guard, right? He catches the jab, and then he goes to the body. He leans in to catch it, right, and takes a step back. He's not able to counter at the moment, right? But he understands that he knows where Barrera is going with that shot. Is able to block it. Fake. Oh my God! Did he just do that? Oh, that's so funny. Barrera shoots a jab, and then Bivol shoots a fake counter jab to bait um, to bait Barrera into throwing that right hand. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. He's setting up counters to the counters with probes, man. I've never seen that before. That's brilliant. Catching him, you know. Again, Barrera with the same kind of tired offense. You know, he hasn't thrown any other styles of punches. Oh, there's a decent like effort from Barrera right there, a different kind of counter, right? Instead of using a jab, uh, Bivol expects the counter jab with that shot and tries to catch it, right? So they call that a cross block. Um, if you want to see a fighter who had an amazing cross block, go back and watch some Fernando Vargas fights uh, from the 90s, man, against Oscar De La Hoya too, or like Trinidad, beautiful, just bop, you know, boom, get that cross block, bop, bop, you can even throw one with your right hand, right, boom, bam, throw one with your left hook or whatever, but it's a cross block, when you throw your punch with one hand, you can catch punches with the other, right, um, you don't have to just use your shoulder or keep your hand up here, um, catch the one, right, and then boom, if they're, if they're going to counter you with the left hook when you throw your right hand, you can catch it, throw it right, anyway, you get what I'm saying. But uh, he's able to take that cross block status away from him by throwing a left hook, you know. And Barrera understanding that he's kind of getting out fought right here, so he needs to figure some things out. Beautiful defense right there from Barrera, understanding the one-two might come after he throws that two, right? Boom. 
And now we'll have to see what adjustments um, Bivol makes uh, for these new defensive postures and these new counters that Barrera is throwing. Man, this is long. I'm so sorry it's so long if you guys are like, um, if you guys are bored at all. Fainting him. Makes him, I don't know if he thought it was going to be a jab or what. Man, I'm not, I don't even know how to break that down, to be honest. <laughs> I don't know what, what either of those guys are doing. But I like that at least Bivol moved off the line after that, that little um, awkward exchange. It is interesting that... Oh, I don't know what happened. Gosh darn it, referee. So he shoots the jab. Bivol catches it and looks to slip the right hand of Barrera and throw his own right hand. Beautiful technique from Bivol, but I can't tell if it lands. It doesn't look like it lands. Man, we're going to have to skip it. It looks like something lands, though, by the way that um, Barrera moves. Maybe there'll be a highlight in the at the end of the round of it. Good job right there from Barrera uh, making some adjustments, right? So um, Bivol has not been controlling Barrera, right? Because he wants Barrera to come in, right? But now Barrera is not being as active in his his flash the lead hand, throw right hand, his jab jabs. They're getting him countered, and Barrera's picking up on it, right? It's not that he he's a bad fighter, right? He just doesn't have all the skills that Bivol does. He doesn't have all the boxing knowledge, right? The experience, right? Um, and even though he's got way more pro fights, right, he hasn't fought fighters as crafty um, that know how to set their punches up like like Bivol. So he has to work out work this stuff out on the fly, right? So he's because of the fact that uh, Bivol is countering him, it's making him less prone to leading, right? Which is going to make Bivol, which is probably going to make Bivol be making more feints and more probes now that we know that Barrera is looking to counter rather than set up his own offense because his offense has been getting wrecked. But he shoots that jab. Shit, I missed it. <clears throat> but Bivol's controlling him with the lead hand. Hey, you gonna do anything? Hey, you gonna do anything? Right? And then he shoots and he steps with that jab a little bit, right? And I think it kind of telegraphs it for um, Barrera to uh, slip it and then go to the body. And it doesn't look like he throws a right hand to the body. It looks like he faints one. And then he comes upstairs with the left hook. Um, now, I got a lot of dislikes talking about, I think it was talking about how Americans kind of slap with their fight or with their punches and, or like, you know, I'll say Western style of boxing, but look at how that hook doesn't turn over, right? It just kind of slaps against his ear, right? Hits with the palm and you can hit the bag and you hit the bag like that, bop, bop, bop. Sounds really flashy. It sounds really nice um, because you're leather on leather. Um, but there's no power in that shot. Like even if that was a like, clean, cold clock on B B uh, Bivol, it's not going to do anything. Um, but Bivol does a good job right here of um, after that combination comes, right? That hook comes. He turns away from it, right? And then immediately, what does he do? He moves off the line and he pushes Barrera, stops him from turning his shot over. Uh, doesn't look like that left uppercut lands uh, because B uh, Bivol looked like he was controlling him. I might be wrong, but... I don't want to go back again because I'm 50 minutes into it. We got one minute left in this round. Barrera trying to set his shot up, right? So he's fainting. Now they're in punching range. He's changing levels. Slips to the inside, but he does it a little too much, right? And uh, doesn't anticipate that a counter is coming and Bivol's completely ready for it and gets him with a one. Um, and Barrera does do a good job of getting away from the second punch. One, two comes, and then Bivol uh, controls him, countering the jab again, right? Barrera comes in with the jab, and Bivol tries to counter it. Again, trying to stop uh, Barrera from being the one to lead. Catching him with the jab. And I'm really waiting for, Barrera, for Bivol to start really controlling him, right? There you go, Barrera, not bad. Shooting a one, boom, and shooting a two. Now look at how the look at the difference, right? Because remember before, Barrera was coming forward in a straight line, right? Jab, jab, right? But this time he shoots the jab and he shoots off to the side. Notice his feet, right? And he moves off the line just a little bit, you know, inches or miles in boxing. And he's able to get just a little bit off the line so that Bivol misses the counter jab. Um, and they both wind up moving off the line to avoid more power shots. Ooh, interesting. I wonder what Bivol was expecting right there. 
because he really sits down right here. It looks like he might be thinking a jab was going to come off this timing, and he's going to shoot a right hand over the top. Catching the jab, countering him, boom. And again, you know, Barrera not being very great at moving um, after he throws that right hand, right? Not doing a very good job of uh, pivoting, moving off the line, controlling his opponent, and just being completely out of position right here, boom, and allowing Bivol to throw punches at him. Um, it doesn't look like any of them land, but that's not the point either, right? It's the fact that those punches eventually are going to be there. Bivol's going to find a punch that works for that combination, um, that works to counter that right hand because it's such a consistent flaw in Barrera's game. Again, um, that's just Barrera, lateral, his poor lateral movement, um, getting him in trouble right there. Uh, probing right hand to the body to set up the left hook, uh, but it doesn't work on Bivol right there because Bivol likes to move off the line. Fainting. Barrera doing a decent job right there. Now, I want to talk about this real quick. When I talk about setting up your punches, right, and not and Barrera not being good at it, right, when he slips right here, right, he, he's kind of in position to or like in close enough to land a punch right here, but he wants to see what what Bivol does, right? And what does Bivol do? He puts his guard up like this so he can catch a shot, right? He's like, oh, Barrera's going to throw a right hand right here because it's the same motion you use to throw a right hand. So he wants to catch it, right? Boom. And then counter, kind of counter him like a counter, uh, catch and counter style, right? So what, what Barrera needs to do is time him on this, right? As you can see, his gloves separate right here. Um, so he wants to slip to the inside, keep his guard up, right? And then wait for uh, Bivol's guard to split or understand that he's going to do that, right? And slip to the inside and come with like a leaping left hook, right? Oh no, let me check that. I always get really nervous when I get emails and shit. Ugh, copyright? What? A new copyright thing? I didn't even put anything up today. Oh well, we'll see what this happens. We'll see, I'll deal with it later. Um, anyway, um, what Barrera needs to do, and again, he does it right here, right? When he's setting up his shots, he needs to look at what, what Bivol gives him, right? And now he faints him right here again. He gives him this, basically the same look when he, he slips to the inside, but he doesn't throw any punches off of it, right? These are feints, right? He's reading him to get information, but he's not using the information in a timely fashion, right? The Basically, it's kind of like um, when you get a text that says you have... You have 10 minutes to text this to whatever, right? But you didn't have your phone on you. It was in your car. Now the now the code is expired and you don't get like, you know, $5 off your, your steak dinner at, you know, Outback Steakhouse or whatever, right? Or like, um, like when you have to call in a radio station, right? Because now Bivol says, oh, he's starting to slip on the inside. Maybe I can set something up off of that, right? And it, it allows Bivol to see what he's doing and, and make adjustments, right? So that's why you want to have a, a more active style to be constantly being able to find ways to get your opponent out of position. Again, he does that little slip to the inside. We'll see if he makes anything of it if I do anything in the, in the, for the third and the fourth round. But Barrera doing a decent job of switching it up on him, right? He was doing one ones and then one twos, right? Now he's faking right hands to bait counters and going for um, uh, for jabs, right? Now this is really interesting because look at this, right? He slips to the ins or he faints him, right? And he does that slip to the inside. That's nearly identical to this, right? So he's gonna slip to the inside. Boom, that's nearly identical to that right hand that he just threw, right? And he gets to see that Barrera, or that Bivol puts his high guard up. Why is he gonna throw a jab at him with his high guard up, right? He could, he could time him, like I did say that, right? Um, but why not throw the left hook? Maybe maybe do that and then shuffle forward and throw a left hook to the body, right? Um, but it takes him a few, you know, 10 seconds or whatever to kind of get that information, right? And now Bivol's like, oh, okay, I've given him too much time to set up his shot, I know something's coming. And he just takes a step back, right? And he's able to get out of there. Right, not able to, to capitalize on the information that he got uh, because it's expired now. I hope that metaphor kind of makes sense and it comes across well, but we'll see, whatever. 
Again, very good job from Bivol right here. Uh, waiting for Barrera to kind of come out of his shell and throw punches. Counters him, gets his cross block up, throws kind of a, um, not a cross, right? But like kind of a, like a weird left hook kind of thing, but he moves off the line while he does it uh, to stop uh, Barrera from really landing any shots on him. Uh, but interesting round, you know, to be honest, um, much more from Barrera than I expected. I didn't expect him to be able to, you know, change up his game as well as he was uh, in the second round. Um, I'll do some more film study. I'm going to watch the rest of the fight right now. Um, I'll be getting off. Um, well, I'll be, I'll be moving places pretty soon. Uh, so I won't be able to do any more film study at the, like, you know, right now. You know, I can do it tomorrow. But um, what was I going to say? But yeah, very interesting. You know, I'm surprised that Bivol is not using the probing as much. You know, I understand that he's waiting for Barrera to put himself out of position because Barrera's a master at putting himself out of position. Um, but yeah, anyway, just really interesting stuff. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let me know if you want me to do the rest of the films, uh, the rest of the rounds too. I'd be happy to. Um, yeah, thanks guys.